a very common request we have from our clients is how do I integrate my monday.com system with my Google Calendar? And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So when a new item is created on a board or when a status changes, it's automatically gonna create a new item on my calendar for the sake of this video. And then it can even invite certain people dependent on the type of item. And in this video, like I said, I'm gonna walk you through all of that. By the way, if you need any help at all, automating, integrating, streamlining your business, with monday.com or any other software, check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. So as you can see here, I am in my example demo monday.com system that I built out. And I am on service number one. So that imagine this is a delivery. So service page number one. What I want to happen is when the status of the project is equal to booked, then I want the data from the actual project, so this item here, to go over to Google Calendar, create an event with the associated time and date columns for that particular calendar event. Makes perfect sense, right? So what I'm going to do is obviously I've got my trigger here. So status being equals to booked, your trigger can literally be anything, by the way, and I'll walk you through the different options in a moment's time. I'm also going to add a couple of date columns. So for the simplicity of this video, I'm going to add two date columns. I'm going to add a start date and time. You don't necessarily need a time start date. So if we go start date, uh, I might actually put time just again for simplicity's sake, just so we're covering all bases. Um, and then I'm just going to duplicate this column column only and end date and time slash time there we go so now this is the data that i'm going to pull through is let's say google calendar example so my event is going to be called this uh we can include the project reference uh the start date and time is going to be when the start uh, when the event starts when the event ends i could put in the project details in the description and also the site address which i'm going to do and again this is just very basic stuff and you can do this for any data point that you're tracking in your monday.com system so i'm just going to change this quickly to customize the date column to show time by default and i'm going to do the same for the end date and time and then i'm just going to put a random date and time in so let's say the 23rd at 9 a.m to the 24th at and then let's just change the time to 3 30 p.m just as an example so this is start time this is the end time again you can do whatever you want with this so like i said our trigger is when status changes to booked so now we're going to use a tool called zapier now if you've not heard of zapier i think you need to get to know zapier it is the swiss army knife of businesses um it is incredible i swear by it it allows you to connect all of the different business softwares within your business to one another so if something happens in this system it triggers an event happen in another system this is how we integrate businesses it's absolutely incredible if you haven't got zapier check it out link in the uh thingy my bob below um and i'm going to head over to my zapier system so as you can see i'm on my zapier system now in order to connect your google calendar and your monday.com system go to apps on the far left hand side over here um, and then we need to go to add connection as you can see i've got loads of things loads of apps connected uh, i like to think that our business is relatively integrated with one another all you need to do is go to add connection top right hand corner search for the app you're looking to connect so in this particular instance it will be my google calendar or just google calendar as you can see there that option so i'm going to go ahead and do that very very quickly so now zapier has permission so that my google calendar is now connected to my zapier account and then the other thing that i need to do is connect my monday.com system again go to add connection search for monday.com um, and obviously select the monday.com app and then it's going to ask for an api token key now do not panic this may sound complicated but it's not at all all you need to do is go back to your monday.com system go to your initials in the far top right hand corner subject to you having administrative permissions of course and then go to administration and then far left hand side just go to connections and then go to api and then you've got a personal api token if there's nothing in here already just press generate it's not going to say regenerate it's going to say generate and then hit copy and then all you need to do is open up that um api v2 token thing in bob and then just paste it in okay and that's it job done so now you've connected your monday.com system and your google calendar same works for outlook calendar but i hate microsoft absolutely despise it and i'm not going to talk about it on this video <laughs> maybe a bit of an exaggeration but i do think it's a bit of a pain um so i'm going to go and now create a zap so how do you create a zap go to create in the top right hand corner here 
and then we need to hit new zap. Now you might be wondering, Nick, why are we not just doing this using like the innate or in app? Uh, integration options. Um, the reason being is doing it via Zapier gives us significantly more flexibility than doing it based on how monday.com wants us to set it up. So we can make a lot more changes. We can add additional things in. I just prefer to do it this way. Um, but if you want to keep things simple, you, you can do. So what we need to do is create a trigger. Now our trigger, as we discussed, if we go back to my service page one is when the status of the service one board changes to booked. So I'm going to search as my trigger and firstly need to select the app that I'm searching for. So monday.com spelling and then just hit that. And then on the right hand side, I need to select the account that I'm associating with. So it could be whatever account you've just connected walking through the API key uh, and then the trigger event. So in this instance, it's going to be specific column value changed in board or specific column values changed in board. Very, very easy. And then just hit continue. And then we need to select the board that's associated with this. So in this instance, it's obviously going to be service one. Um, and then we need to define the column ID. So in this case, it's going to be the status. So we're saying when in board service number one, the status changes to booked again, we've got kind of to the status changing bit, um, then trigger an event to happen. Um, so go ahead and press continue from here. Uh, and we can test the trigger, make sure it's all working uh, and we're all good and get some data to actually pull through, which is all very important stuff. So now we've got a data point that's pulled through. You can see here that we have got Nick Boardman dash Google Calendar example. So in case you can't see anything, just make sure you create a trigger. So maybe just change the status from in progress to booked and then back again. And then Monday or then Zapier will identify a change there. Um, and then go ahead and hit continue with selected record. Now, the thing we do need to add is a filter because we don't want. So at the moment, we've set up the zap that anytime this status column changes, it's going to create a Google calendar, but or a Google calendar event, but we only want the status when it's equal to booked to create a Google calendar event. So we're just going to add a very quick and simple filter that says only when status and status being at the moment, it's in progress, I believe. Uh, yeah. And only so status column exactly matches and then booked. So booked being literally what is written here, booked, okay? And then all we need to do is press continue. Don't need to test the step. You can see here that this isn't gonna pull through because at the moment, this particular item is status is equal to in progress. So going back to the zap, then hit continue. And now we need to go ahead and add our event to Google Calendar. So we're gonna search for the Google Calendar. Uh, there we go, Google Calendar application. Um, and then we need to create an action. So obviously I've got my associated uh, Google Calendar, which I added earlier on in this video. Then I need to go to action event and I can create calendar, create detailed event, delete event, quick add event, update event, API requests, find event. We can do all sorts of clever stuff in this instance. I just going to want to go ahead and create a detailed event. Okay. And then all I need to do is hit continue. And now we're going to configure this event. So first and foremost, I need to select the calendar that we're adding this event to. Now you may have lots and lots of different calendars. So I'm going to select my one. So I've just selected my calendar. And then from there, I need to add a summary. So summary is like a title. So what I want to do is I want to press the plus button on the right hand side of summary. And this will allow me to pull information from my monday.com item to my Google calendar. So I use the drop down menu. And as you can see, I've got the post name, got event, the post name, I've got a status, I've got the date. Um, I've got the event day. I should have date and time somewhere here. Maybe there's no data in the event date and time. So I will have to go and add it. I oh, know there is, we did add it as you can see here. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to set the name name as post name. So post name in monday.com is this column here, the like the, the one that you can't really do anything with um, nor move. So that's a post name. So now I've set the title of my Google calendar as the name of the item as displayed in my service number one board. Then I'm going to add a description. Now, what would I like to include in my description? I want the project details and I want the site address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write project details and then I'll put a, a colon. Is it a semicolon or a colon, whatever it is, press plus, And then I'm going to pull that information directly from here. So you can see, and I can even search, I can see that details about the projects is what's written here. So if I search details about the project and select long text, make sure you don't hit event long text, just long text one or whatever it is. And then also I want to add the site address. 
site address. So now we're creating a template for all of these events. Um, you can see that's the site address. I'm hoping this is going to be available to pull through 15 London end. It is indeed. There we go. So I can also add the site address to my pro, uh, my event description as well. Now you could even add the location as the site address in the event if you want to get really sophisticated i'm not going to do that in this particular video um, and you can select whether this is conferencing or not then we need to define our start date and time and our end date and time now there's something to be very mindful of here so i'm going to go ahead and press the plus button on the far right hand side again and i'm going to scroll down and we should be able to find our start date and time and our end date and time Let's have a look. So as you can see, I found our start date. So it's 23rd of the 9th at 11. The weird thing is it's two hours ahead of when it actually should be. So we might have to do what's called reformatting data, which is a bit of a nightmare. But for the time being, I'm just going to put this in. So you can see that now the start date is mapped by date column 11, which is actually the start date and time. It's annoying that the, the names don't pull across, but you'll be able to see 23rd of September. Of course, this is in American format, 23rd of September 2024 at 11. It says 11 as opposed to 9. That is an issue with time zones and the way that your account is set up. We can change this and I'll walk you through it in a moment. We also then need to add our end date and time. So go to specific column values. Let's go here again. What time does the event end? So it's on the 24th at 3.30. So I suspect based on this, it's going to be at 5.30. So the 24th, let's have a look here. There you go. I was right. Dupe start date and time 24th of September at 5.30. So as you can see, both time options for whatever reason, hour uh, uh, a couple of hours out so that means that all of them are uh, going to end up being a couple of hours out so this is something that we're going to need to fix and like i said i'll show you how to do that in a moment's time we can select the repeat frequency so if you would like to repeat it repeat until repeat how many times all day yes or no you can define the color you can also invite people if you want to and that's literally just a case of putting in an email so i might put development at crmcrew.com and i'd like to invite them to this particular event i can define the visibility so public or private uh, if if you're using Google Calendar, this should be stuff that you are familiar with. Um, use default reminders. Uh, yes, reminders, minutes before reminders, show me is free or busy. So I'm going to be busy and then guests can modify event. Yes or no. So these are literally all of the options you would have when creating a Google event. But now it's all just automated. This may seem like a long winded thing to have to do, but once you've got this set up and this integration working, then every time it's just going to be automatic. It just writes that information straight over to your Google Calendar. It's going to make a lot of sense. So now the only thing that we need to fix is the start date and time because that is not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a feature called formatter. So we need to press the plus button between filter conditions and create detailed event. And I'm just going to search format by Zapier. There we go. And then I need to choose an action event. So on the far right hand side, we've got date and time numbers, text and utilities. I'm going to select date and time as a formatting event. And then I need to transform the data. So we actually need to add slash subtract time. This is going to be the easiest way of doing it, provided that everything is consistently two hours ahead. Um, and you will have to test this. I have no idea why this happens. I'm yet to find out when I do have an answer, I will, <laughs> I will update everyone. Um, so add slash subtract date slash time. Go to input. So let's start with the start time and date. So our input is literally that data point. So uh, let's go, which one was it? It was the 23rd at 11. There we go, that one there. And then the expression, this may sound complicated, but just put the minus sign, minus two space hours. Uh, and then you can define the format as well. So how do you want it to look? So I'm just going to say, let's just do this one here. So this secondary format. And there we go and hit continue. And now I'm going to test this step. And what's going to happen is it's going to reformat, say 23rd of September, 23rd, 24 at 9 a.m., which is actually the start time and date for this particular event. OK, and now I'm just going to rename this, hit the three dotted button, rename it to start time slash date just so we don't forget uh, and then we need to duplicate this so i'm going to hit duplicate and then we need to do end time and date so i'm going to just rename this to end time and date as opposed to start remove the copy thing end time slash date click into this go to configure now i'm going to delete the input being our start time and date and change it to end time slash date 
Uh, and let me just scroll down. Hopefully we can find that. So it would have been at 530 based on this very weird thing that seems to happen. So there you go. And again, we keep the expression of minus two hours and keep the formatting as well. Go ahead and just press retest step. And you will see here that that's 3.30. Is that right? 3.30 p.m. It is awesome. And now all we need to do is hit continue and now reconfigure the start time and date inputs from the, the data that was being pulled from monday.com into the data that's being pulled from our reformatting machine, our magical machine that reformats. So select start date and time, use the start date and time reformatter, just define the output and the same again, press the plus button on the right hand side, end date and time and then define the output. And now we're all good to go. And literally I can go ahead and press test step. And on the September 23rd, 2024 at 9am, it's gonna create an event with the name Nick Boardman dash Google calendar example and the end date and time being September 2020, 24th, 2024 at 3.30 p.m. Um, and then obviously all of the other things that we configured would be pushed over so i'll go ahead press continue i'm going to skip the test because or actually i might just test it um, i'm not going to show you what my calendar looks like but it will be available there you can see that this has worked perfectly and then finally all you need to do is hit the publish button down the bottom right hand corner um, and your zap is live and then you are good to go and now every time i have an item on the service number one board or whatever board you've created this for and the status changes based on the trigger that we've created. So let's say it's booked, just as an example. Every time I create a, an item and change the status to booked, all of this data is going to pull through to my Google Calendar and create an event. And that is maybe a long-winded, but this is how to integrate monday.com with Google Calendar in a complex way um, to push data from one system to the next. Uh, and trust me, this may have been a 20, 30-minute video, however long this has been, but imagine how much time you will save going through this working it out setting everything up um and then the data just seamlessly flows between one system to the next and you don't have to spend ages doing admin tasks creating and editing and updating outlook calendars or well in this instance google calendars like i said there are links to all of the videos that will probably point you in the right direction if you're not so familiar with zapier i appreciate this is a maybe slightly higher level uh tutorial um but like I said, links in the description below for anything that I think is going to be relevant to educate yourselves further uh, on how to use these systems. Thank you ever so much for watching. Like I said, if you do need any help at all, automating, integrating, streamlining your business with monday.com and various other business applications, if you want integrations just like this for your business, check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.